Hello and welcome to this overview of my top five favorite romance books that I read in December. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot and you're watching Random Olive Reads. First up, we have A Wicked Game by Kate Bateman. This is book three of the Ruthless Rivals series. So the Davies and the Montgomery families have been rivals for centuries, but it's a friendly sort of rivalry where the kids played together growing up and mostly just bickered with each other. So when Morgan is ready to head out to sea, Harriet gives him a reason to come back by allowing him three kisses if he survives and returns. A few years later, he survives torture and imprisonment and wants only one thing when he comes back. He wants Harriet's hand in marriage. However, with their history of fighting and dares, he knows that she will not believe him or take him seriously if he proposes outright, so he plans to seduce her and wear her down. This book overall was a lot of fun and low angst between our two rivals, aside from a little brush with dastardly villains here and there. Overall, I loved seeing Morgan's scheme to bring Harriet into his arms and her trying to resist him. And I love that both of their families were really supportive and knew that these two people loved each other even before they realized it themselves. And then I read How to Love a Duke in 10 Days by Kerrigan Byrne. This is book one of the Devil You Know series. As expected, there's a huge amount of drama and emotional turmoil in this book. We start with a tragic prologue where Alexandra is attacked by her school headmaster, defends herself, and then needs her friends to assist her in covering things up. To help her feel better, her two best friends reveal their own tragic secrets. As expected, the two friends will make up the main characters of the other two books in this series, which I also read and enjoyed this month, but this first book really was my favorite. Chapter 1 starts 10 years later when Alexandra is on her way to a Duke's Masquerade Ball, where her friend is supposed to be announced as his fiancée. What follows is a series of near-death experiences, blackmail, family destitution, and the sort of fearful pull that Alexandra has towards her friends intended. Now, Alexandra has been protecting herself and avoiding being alone with men ever since she was attacked by her headmaster. Um, now that she has all of these feelings towards her friend's fiancé, it's a little scary. Um, don't worry, though. Her friend isn't in love with him at all, and it was a marriage contract from many years past. When Alexandra finds out about the allowance the future Duchess will receive, she proposes that the Duke marry her instead of her friend. And this is so that she can help, like, pay off her blackmailer. And then on top of that, we have even more drama with the Duke's backstory, his family history. He was attacked by a panther and scarred. He was ditched by his fiance for his cousin. And he has a general mistrust of women. These two people have lots of reasons for not trusting each other, but they somehow feel safe and protected when they're together. I love seeing them start to slowly melt towards each other. We have another new release, uh, Cinderella and the Duke by Lydia Drake. It's a standalone novel. I'm actually not sure if there are follow-up novels after this. This is a debut for this author. So we have Julia, who is the Cinderella in the story. She's escorting her younger sister to a ball while her stepmother is ill. This is Julia's one chance to find a husband since her stepmother refuses to let Julia go out to any balls. Now, she sees a rake kind of pursued by a widow and possibly compromised so she protects him and um, helps the duke avoid being called out in a duel um, while that's happening she actually ends up kissing the duke and then runs away thinking that she's ruined everything when our rake of a duke gregory comes to call the next day with her lost slipper she proposes a marriage of convenience to him he helps her get out from under her stepmother's control, and she helps him avoid the lecherous women of the town. Both of these people are deeply insecure. They play an emotionally detached role to protect themselves from being hurt. However, they have great chemistry and enjoy each other's company. I really, really like this book from this author, and I hope to see more. 
Next up, I'm going to talk about A Lady Awakened by Cecilia Grant. Now, this one I thought was going to be more scandalous than it was, but here's what's going on. The blurb on the back of the book start tells the story of a desperate widow, Martha, in need of an heir to protect her household from the man who stands to inherit. And she propositions a scoundrel of a man, Theo, to assist her. Now, going into this book, I expected it to jump right into high steam, but I found it pretty cold. This woman is cold and industrious and completely uninterested in pleasure that her partner is definitely willing to provide. I started to feel bad for the guy because how fun can it be when she's just doing this to get pregnant and like not participating in any other way? Um, Our guy has been exiled to this kind of country home from his baronet father so that he can try to like make some use of himself rather than be a wastrel in town. So we have our two very opposite personalities in a business arrangement with very cold, intimate relations, but somehow this book makes it work. It's this very slow progression with... Theo slowly learning to care for the well-being of the laborers on his land and actually growing an attachment to these people that he's supposed to help support. He's having real conversations with Martha about land management and his goals and how to improve the land. And Martha is slowly coming to admire him. And the more that she admires him, the more willing she is to accept his attentions in the bedroom. And so we have these two people, total opposites, just slowly coming together and starting with that friendship. And then lastly, I will tell you about The Elusive Wife by Callie Hutton. This is book one of the Marriage Mart series, and it is available on Kindle Unlimited. Now, as a stipulation of the late Earl's will, we have Jason, who needs to fulfill an arranged marriage to inherit. However, he is completely drunk through the wedding and abandons his new wife immediately the next morning. Now, the new Countess Olivia is appalled and embarrassed with her new situation and goes to London to visit her friend and confront her wayward husband. When they see each other at a ball, he doesn't recognize her at all. Not one bit. He has no recollection. He proceeds to flirt with her, even though he at least knows he's married. While she is angry at him, he is so besotted that he seeks an annulment from his wife so that he can pursue the beautiful lady from the ball, even though that's act- that woman is actually his wife. It's a humor setup, and then when the truth finally tumbles out, our Earl is trying very hard to woo his wife, make the marriage work, even though she's totally skeptical and resists. Um, I haven't seen a setup like this before, so I had a lot of fun reading this and the rest of the series. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to all of these books are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.